Hi, it's October 25th. This is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update. I'm Mike Stanton here with Grant Dewey from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. I'm out here at the Bonfire California Public Finance Conference. Grant is back in New York. Thanks for taking the time this morning. Uh, thanks, Mike. How are you? I'm doing well. Grant, I, I sometimes think that there's a little bit of a correlation between the weeks you're on the video and when we have a lot of interesting things to talk about. Sometimes uh, some uh, traders might want to look at that as an indicator. Again, this is a very interesting week. I'll let you take it away, uh, talk about some of the activity we saw on Wednesday and how yields are ending up. Yeah, it really was a, uh, it was a big week. Uh, there, was, there was a lot of supply in the market. It was a great week for BAM. And, uh, you know, we had, um, it's, it was a challenging week. Muni's underperformed uh, in the face of, you know, another $13 billion uh, calendar. Uh, Treasury yields have risen to their highest levels uh, since July. So um, we've had, uh, we have had some weakness, you know, 10-year uh, uh, AAA munis as a, as a percent of 10-year treasuries rose uh, to 71%. They've been in the mid-60s uh, for, for most of October. Uh, the 30-year ratio also rose by a lesser uh, margin from uh, 83% uh, to 86%. Uh, and those adjustments were necessary really to kind of get um, to attract buyers to the, the heavy supply again this week. Uh, a lot of economic uh, data to sift through next week, including uh, the unemployment report on Friday. So um, September uh, employment rose, you know, a surprising uh, 254,000. And since then, uh, the markets of 10-year uh, and 30-year have risen um, 30 basis points. I think they're looking for 120,000 um, increase uh, in this report, which um, should be you know, obviously a, a lot more benign for the market. Um, you know, At and some then, level, this course, is this is exactly the volatility people have been talking about all year. We've been talking yeah. for months about how issuers were trying to front load the calendar, bring their transactions to market before the election. Uh, certainly some of the commentary around the Treasury market move was that it was a reaction to potential changes in the presidency and, and, and the deficit outlook for the U.S. So this is exactly the kind of volatility that issuers were, were trying to avoid. But obviously, as you mentioned, the, the calendar remains full right up to the election as, as there are still more deals to come. Exactly. I mean, in October, we've already seen 50 billion uh, in new issue supply so far in October. We've got another, uh, you know, 10 billion. Uh, some of that will get tacked on to that number. And, and uh, so, you know, I think most people have expected and, uh, you know, that we'll see less supply in November, December. But um, I think, and I think that, the other thing people are really interested in is, is what kind of follow through you get from the investor side, retail investors in particular. Um, you know, after you know, we have another week of, of inflows to municipal bond mutual funds, but that fell from one point seven billion dollars uh, last week to just five hundred thirty million dollars this week. Uh, next week, I think a lot of people here at the conference and elsewhere are talking about they think there might actually be some net in outflows as uh, as yields rise. So, um, you know, seeing that kind of follow through, but uh, again, you know, the market will quiet down and the, the supply pressure will ease up. And so that, uh, that will probably smooth some things out. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, as I mentioned, we had a really productive week and I think that was, you know, with Treasury's weaker uh, munis following suit with a lot softer uh, demand, you know, the increased marketability uh, of, of insurance really helped um, get a lot of these deals, uh, you know, executed and, and, and into the market this week, we had a um, 800 and just about 850 million of of, uh, of deals this week, plus another 50 million or so in the secondary. So uh, that's a that's a big week, and I think uh, insurance played a large role uh, in both the competitive and negotiated market. Um, and some of the deals to call out and highlight from this week: uh, the C of Springfield, Illinois Electric System, three hundred seventy-two million dollars. I was priced by J.P. Morgan. Uh, Fond du Lac County, up in Wisconsin, did another one of their bug tussle wireless transactions that BAM has talked about, and viewers can uh, learn about on the BAM YouTube channel from our Credit Insights video. That was fifty-two million dollars, priced by Ramirez and Company, and a couple of forty-five million dollar deals. The Phoenix Elementary School District in Arizona, priced by Stiefel, and the Delaware County Vocational and Technical School Authority over in Pennsylvania. Another another 45 million priced by RBC Capital Markets. Uh, next week's calendar, I, I'm seeing about $525 million on the BAM insured calendar looking ahead. I think, uh, as, I think as you mentioned, just under 10 billion nationwide. Anything standing out to you there? Um, not really, other than, you know, that will obviously the following week is, uh, are the elections and, um, you know, and there will be a lot of uh, referendums voted on there and Cal School District's gonna have big ramifications um, for uh, for supply going forward, I'm seeing already a couple of the um, couple of the uh, broker dealers are out um, 
anticipating 500 billion plus uh, for next year. So we really are in, uh, seem, uh, you know, kind of a different environment. There's uh, there's a lot of product. There's a lot of attention to our market. We continue to see inflows. So um, so everything's looking pretty good. And that's a great point about Cal School Districts. So obviously, a major uh, point of discussion here at the conference. Our colleague uh, Todd Tomich, who runs the West Region Public Finance for BAM, moderated a panel about the K twelve sector. Two dynamics going on there. One is the state itself has a ten billion dollar school bond referendum on the ballot. That money is going to be provided as matching funds to local school districts who have their own bond referendums. And so, in anticipation of applying for that money, I think the number is somewhere north of two hundred thirty school districts across the state of California have thirty eight billion dollars of local bond referendums on the agenda. California as a whole is about 70 percent of the uh, of the bond um, uh, referendums on the ballot, uh, you know, in, coming up on November 5th. So it's uh, it's going to be a very uh, full calendar coming up uh, into 2025, 20, uh, as you mentioned. Um, just a couple of transactions, spam insured transactions to highlight for next week if people are in the market. $381 million for the Atlanta water and wastewater system. That's going to be priced by Wells Fargo Securities. $41 million for the Crowfoot Valley Ranch Metro District in Colorado. That's going to be priced by Piper Sandler. And $35 million for the city of Toledo, Ohio. That's a key bank capital markets transaction. Grant, thanks for your time this week. Uh, have a great yeah. weekend, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Mike.